A global summit to end sexual violence in conflict, co-chaired by Angelina Jolie and Foreign Secretary William Hague, is about to start tomorrow in London. The summit represents the first worldwide attempt to end rape in conflict, and the Democratic Republic of Congo is at the heart of the matter. According to a research, 48 women are raped in DRC every hour, or 1,152 every day. A total of 12% of the female population of the DRC have been raped at least once. A harrowing but powerful documentary by award-winning filmmaker Fiona Lloyd Davis, entitled Seeds of Hope, focuses on the extraordinary story of Maziki, a multiple rape survivor who has founded a rescue center that helped more than 6,000 women and children in Eastern Congo. We spoke to Fiona about her upcoming documentary, which will be screened at the summit in London. I looked for another story uh, and talked to Médecins Sans Frontières, and they said there is an epidemic of rape that is going unreported in Eastern Congo. You must go there. And so I went with them and went to um, a, a remote town in the middle of the forest and found about between 50 and 70 percent of the women had been raped. And it was a very, very shocking story. To, I've covered rape in Bosnia during the war and after the war, but to actually see quite so many people, so many people affected by it, families that have been torn apart and the way the communities are destroyed, but so many women who've been affected in such a violent way was very, very striking. And it made me want to keep going back. Um, at that time, it was very hard to get the story out at all because of world events which were taking precedence. And it wasn't really until 2006, I kept returning, uh, that uh, it started to get easier. And in 2009, I met Masika for the first time. And clearly her story is so extraordinary and what she's doing is so remarkable that I felt that this was something that I wanted to make in, into a wider film. She herself has an extraordinary and, and horrible uh, story of survival. Uh, she was brutally uh, raped um, in 2000 uh, in front of her husband. He was uh, murdered. Uh, in front of her. Her two teenage daughters were also raped and became pregnant. She was ostracized from her family. And she says, she tells me that it was through the generosity and support of the women who helped her recover that made her want to start up a center and help other women and children. And I wanted to tell her story. The documentary also tells the striking story of one of Maziki's daughters, Rachel, who at the age of 15, raped and pregnant, made the horrifying discovery that she was the product of rape herself. Maziki had been the exact same age, 15, when she was first raped by a school teacher. Rachel says she hates her son, and that if it wasn't for him, she could have become someone, a lawyer maybe. So with someone like Rachel, you see she's, uh, she feels her life has been so devastated, and Stevie, her son, from rape is the easiest way and the constant reminder as well uh, of what happened to her because he is always there and it is particularly bad for boys uh, boy uh, children from rape because they have no inheritance they have no status they have no name and so for them I think it is very hard but it does depend on the individual um, some uh, women are, are, are able to uh, see past maybe the um, the event and uh, don't focus it uh, on, on their child, but I think it's very individual and, and a very, very difficult thing to, to know how to help them get over it as well. I think they have no choice, and uh, they're in a country that, where they are very poor, life is very hard. Uh, if they don't get up and get out of bed, their children will starve. Uh, many of them have been rejected by their husbands and their families and they are there alone with their, ch with their children and they are the only person who is going to feed those children and support them. So uh, they don't necessarily have a choice and I think many of them are very profoundly depressed and um, uh, need help. But they also draw on each other's strength and I think it is very inspirational to see that these women can rise above this terrible violence uh, physically and uh, psychologically and find ways to help each other and certainly with Masika you see that she says looking after the children keeps her stable and it's the love that she can give for the children and that they give back to her that actually keeps her going. I hope to um, continue to raise awareness. I think there is, I think the fact that this global summit is happening at all is, is, is remarkable but it also shows an enormous sea change 
from when I first started working in Eastern Congo. And the fact that people are coming from all over the world, that governments and the British government uh, with uh, Angelina Jolie are highlighting this issue is, is, a good, is a very good thing. But something has to happen. Something actually has to be implemented on the ground um, and uh, something that is, um, as, again, a broad and, and specific uh, actions that need to be taken. So I hope this film continues to highlight the issue, that it gives the women a voice, and that it also is something that can continue to remind people that they can should keep pressing governments, and the British government in particular, to actually honour what they say they're going to do and implement it and see changes on the ground.